at the front of the aisle. And now, please welcome to the stage, Sandy Fox, Clary Hart, Samantha Inouye Hart, Lex Lang, Patrick Seitz, and Chris Patton. You can just look up. Okay, I'm gonna do this. No, we'll confuse people. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Hey, I'm Chris Patton. Um, I'm a voice actor. Yes, that's what I do. Uh, I've been doing this, dear God, in heaven and anywhere else for 20 years. Um, that's so scary. Oh, thank you. Yes. Great. Uh, whatever. Okay, yeah, I've been in a whole bunch of shows. Uh, the Full Metal Panic and Full Metal Alchemist and um, Haikyuu and Diabolic Lovers and... Uh, um, uh, what, it, I've been doing this for a long time and I've done a lot of shows. Dr. Google is your friend. Okay. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Hello. Hello. One, two, is it working? Yes, I guess so. Um, I'm Lex Lang and I have also been working in this voice acting fun business. This year is my 22nd year. Um, I started way back with Power Rangers, where in Power Rangers Turbo I played Rygog and, he, and uh, Larigo, the little wizard, and then in Power Rangers in Space, I, I did Ecliptor, which was the green villain. Yay! And then uh, I went on to do regular animation after that uh, in anime. I, I started back with Rurouni Kenshin. Um, I played Sinosuke in Rurouni Kenshin. And um, a ton of other stuff over the years. And I've uh, been in Bleach and Naruto. And I played uh, Sozin the Fire Lord and Avatar the Last Day. And the miraculous ladybug, uh, I'm Jagged Stone, the Rock and Roller. Yeah. Um, and then a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, for Tsunami Asia, if you happen to be in Asia and you're watching uh, Dragon Ball Super, I play Goku for all of Asia. Uh, Sean Shuffle plays it for the United States, so he's been doing that for years and years. And uh, besides that, I'm a director also. I've directed a bunch of shows, including uh, Gundam Iron Blooded Orphan Season 2. And uh, a bunch of other stuff. So anyway, I could go on for the whole hour, so I won't. And here's Sandy. Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Sandy Fox. I've been a voice actor in Los Angeles for 27 years. Uh, some of the very first anime that I I voiced uh, provide voices for was the Tachikomas and Ghost in the Shell. Tachikoma, Bako, Bako, and. Um, Let's see, uh, Magic Night Rare, I played Lady Asuka, and I also sang all the songs, dubbed the songs in English, and Lex and I actually wrote the lyrics, the adaptation of the lyrics for those songs. Uh, Roroni Kenshin, I sang the Freckles theme song, and um, let's see, what else? I think, oh, Sumomo and Chobit, Swan and Disgaea, Harmony and uh, Puffy Yumi Ami, Ami Yumi, and um, yeah, Akira, the original Akira, I played Kyoko. And uh, let's see, so recently, um, I still, I'm, I've been the voice of Betty Boop since 1991, so I'm doing a lot of Betty Boop animation right now for Hearst. And Hello Kitty, I voiced Hello Kitty and her first musical appearance in the North American tour of the Super Cute Friendship Festival. And uh, Vern in Grand Blue Fantasy, Kana and Male Kana in Fire Emblem Heroes most recently. And I've been recording 
Chibi Yusa and Sailor Moon, which has just been such an honor to work on that show since uh, 2014, and we're still recording, so, so happy to be here. Hi guys, uh, I've probably met a lot of you already. My name is Clary Harp. I have been a voice actor for Funimation for about 15 years, and I've been the director of technical operations for almost that long as well. So I'm more of a, definitely more of a behind the scenes person, but I'm easy to cheat sheet here to look up my roles. Um, some of my, well, probably my most famous role is uh, China and Taiwan and Hitalia. Um, so, uh, Kaede and Negama. Uh, Mrs. Armstrong in Full Metal Alchemist. I also played Usopp's mom in One Piece. Um, for those of you who like a little more adult stuff, I uh, was Laura and Rin, Daughters of Mnemosyne. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. I see you, sir. <laughs> and, <laughs> um, and just a few more other titles. So, like I said, I'm more of a behind-the-scenes person these days, but I still have plenty to talk about. Oh, Chin Chin. I was Miss Katz. <laughs> see, I forgot one more good one. But I will let it to the time. Um, yeah, I'm gonna cheat too. I'm sorry. I'm happy. I am! I'm going on to my IMDb. <laughs> because I don't ever remember what I'm in. Um, so I, I'm a, also a voice actress, also work behind the scenes. Um, I've been in the industry uh, doing animation since 97, and I got into voice acting um, in 98, uh, which is funny because I started off as, a, as an animator, and I the drawings, and the uh, producer came up behind me and was like, you have an annoying voice. You'd be perfect in anime. <laughs> and I was like, okay. <laughs> so, um, so some of the things that I was in, um, I'm also in a lot of live action movies. So you can hear me in Fairy Tale, Pirate 101. Um, I just recorded something um, for Wizard 101 uh, recently, DC Universe Online. I'm in World of Warcraft. Um, uh, those are all video games. I need to get to the anime stuff. Trinity Blood! Yay! Blade of the Phantom Master. I don't even know what that is. Get Backers. <laughs> New Christmas and North Star. Tea Princess Yushi. I was in a happy lesson. Um, King of Bandit Jane, Samurai X, uh, a lot of really badly dubbed um, uh, action, live action movies, Magical Play, Final Fantasy, I'm the Chocobo! Um, yeah! And lot, lots of like giant robot shows like Mazen Kaiser, Zone of the Enders, Die Guard. Um, and you can see me in Office Space, <laughs> and Idiocracy too. Yeah, yeah. You can see me in like like really terrible outfits in Sea City. So, um, you can, uh, so yeah, lot, lots of lots of live action too. So, uh, and this coming December twenty first, be sure to go check out uh, in theaters uh, uh, Alita: Battle Angel, um, which was uh, directed by Robert Rodriguez and produced by James Cameron. So definitely check that out. You'll see me in a mohawk. Um, <laughs> I'm a cyborg, which is funny, and I dragged a whole bunch of other voice actors in on that, so we'll see a lot of cameos. So. I, I watched everybody go for their phone, I watched it happen, I had plenty of time to go for my own phone and like look stuff up, and I didn't. But I feel like I should have, it's before, like I saw it happen, and I had all the time in the world. Um, I'm Patrick Sides, and uh, Frankie and One Piece and Jeremy and other stuff. Rhonda and Blaze Blue and and Wood 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 Dio and uh. Red Eye. So you guys know? Feel like I so contracted you guys. What you guys do? Yeah. And we do this one tweet. Um. That's all I got. Go up for the same parts. <laughs> 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 oh. Sorry, I just had to So there are a couple of microphones. Oh, there's one at least. There's one microphone over here. If anyone has a question, feel free to start a line, a single file file line right there. And we'll start taking questions. Okay. I have one quick voice acting technical question and then like the actual question. 
the second question is, um, I keep getting cast in a lot of like, like ground leads stuff in my throat, and I find yeah. that if I keep doing that for a while, and my voice just dies for like a day or two, how do I stop that from happening? And then the second question is, if you could have, if what is your dream voice acting role, regardless if you think it'll happen ever or not? Well, as far as the growly voices, it's really good to warm up as much as you can. Also, when you're doing those growly voices, if you can support it from lower in your chest cavity as opposed to really tensing up your throat. So if you're doing like a, that's what happens when someone comes, you want to feel it more kind of lower in your, than your voice box, because if you, if you just thrash your voice box over and over, you'll be sidelined for a couple of days. And that does happen. That happens to us during sessions where we have to scream a lot or do military stuff. And you know, you're, the direction might be, okay, we want you to do it three times. The first time, like, there's grenades going off all around you. The second time, like, there's a giant melee with helicopters going on around you. And the third time, like, you're in a ravine and there's a giant melee going on around you. And you have to say, get to the chopper or whatever, you know. <laughs> you know you get to the generator or whatever it may be. And so you've got to really yell all, all these different ways. And um, no matter how warmed up you are and how many breaks you take, how much honey with lemon and tea, you throw the coat of tea and loquat and all this other stuff. If you're doing that for four hours, you're going to walk away going, All right, guys, that was a good session. See you, see you in about a week when my voice comes back, you know? So that, that's what I would say about the gravelly stuff. Um, I would also say when you do your audition, never use a voice in your audition that you couldn't sustain for a series. So you have to play around and find where you're comfortable and you're able to sustain that throughout a series. Yeah. And then you want to, your, your role that you want to play? You want to go down the if, line there? If they ever did like an anime version of Frank Herbert's Dune, I would be anything in that. Like, I wouldn't even care. I'd be like third star the car from the right. I wouldn't even care. It's like, let me, let me voice a sandworm for an hour and a half. I don't care. Like, I would, I would happily do that. Most times it's got to be working. If you're like, what's your dream role? I'm like, my dream role is to be this schmuck who, like, pays his bills consistently doing this year in and year out. Somehow I've been able to do that, knock on wood, the last day of I mean, that's, not to sound glue, but that's kind of a dream roll right there. I feel like I already got my dream roll. Um, I got to be the chocobo. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, the, the director, like, so it's weird, so in, in the Austin, Texas area, uh, back in the day. Oh, oh, sorry. Um, so back in the day, we really like a lot of times the director would already have an idea of like who he wants to cast for uh, a character, and so a lot of times I would get a phone call and be like, "Hey, we got this character for you. Uh, uh, can you start recording like on Tuesday?" Um, so, uh, so I received a phone call and they were like, we got this really cute little girl character, her name's I, she's like gonna be in every episode, she's a lady, you'll love her. And, um, I got into the studio and I noticed that, that there was this giant bird on, on the screen and I was like, oh my god, that looks awesome, what, what is that bird? And they were like, oh, that she like a chocobo, and I was like, oh! Chocobo. And they were like, no, you can't be the Chocobo because that's another main character. I was like, I don't freaking care about this little girl character. I'm going to be that. <laughs> um, so they literally, like, I nagged and nagged and nagged because I was the only one in the office that knew anything about Final Fantasy. And I was geeking out about all things Final Fantasy and they were all staring at me like, she's nuts. <laughs> So, um, so yeah, uh, so I literally took like a $3,000 pay cut in order to play the, the Chocobo, but that's, that's my dream. I like, literally was like, screw the money, I want to be a bird. So. <laughs> yeah, I, get to, I get to still be the bird too, so I, I just got back from uh, Japan two weeks ago and um, I got to go to Square. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Alright, um, mine are pretty easy. So my dream role is Maleficent. Yeah. That's totally my thing. 
But uh, my other dream role is super geeky because I would like to be the voice of the computer on Star Trek. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I also, like you, feel like I am voicing some of my dream roles, Betty Boop and Chibiusa. But if Rusi Taylor ever retires, I would love, love, love to be Minnie Mouse. I have such a love for Minnie and Disney and um, also Snow White, so we can work together. <laughs> Do I have I just this last year sort of had my dream roles come up. Um, I'm a big Star Wars fan. I have been since I was a kid. Woo! And um, over the years I've been in like all the video games of Star Wars and back all the way when it was GameCube and Rogue Squadron 3, I, I played Han Solo and I started playing Stormtroopers in the different games. And um, I played Stormtroopers I think in every game up until now um, and Han Solo in a few. And then in Battlefront 2, I got to play Poe Dameron, and so that was a real thrill. But my real like dream was to do a voice in an actual Star Wars film. And so this last year, I got to be in three of them. I got to be in Rogue One, The Last Jedi, and the Solo movie as the Stormtrooper voices. And so that's a thrill. But my super dream, which is like one level up, is that I get an actual character that has a, a, a through line through the film as a voice actor. That's that's definitely one of them. Um, and then I played Batman a few times and a couple things like Batgirl Year One and for Mattel Toys and some other things. And but I would really love to have a, a, a series, a Batman series, where I get to play Batman again. That would be a real dream. The other dream that came true was that I, you know, since Clone Wars started, I wanted to be on a Star Wars animated series. And I've tried out over and over and over and over, like through the last seven or eight years. And um, I finally got a, a, a nice character role on Star Wars Resistance that's coming out in October. So tune in in October. October 7th is the premiere. And we'll all find out who I am. Such a tease. Um, <laughs> My, I guess it, I don't know, I'm sitting here thinking about it. We've all played so many here. I'm sure a lot of us have fulfilled our dreams. But I was like, if I could invent something new, it's really randomly uh, dorkish and specific. Um, it, I want, it makes no sense either. I want there for some reason to be a new, like, fully produced radio drama style recording of Ray Bradbury's Something Wicked This Way Comes, and I want to voice Mr. Dark. That's, that's, like, if any of you even know what I'm talking about, that's a dream of mine. Like, I'm obsessed with that book. And uh, I would love to also uh, voice someone who's uh, halfway close to my age, because I always play sad teenage boys. <laughs> Thank you, thank you for the question. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see here. What is the role that you've had the most fun doing? Like, you just couldn't wait to get into the booth and do this role. Outside of the choke I mean, you are going on the up. That's pretty easy for me. Uh, if any of you are acquainted with a little dub of a show called Ghost Stories. Um, that's... Honestly, probably, I mean, we all love working and paying our bills and we get paid to do a fun thing, but that was some of the most fun I've ever had in a booth, definitely. For me, I think it was on a video, a bunch of video games. I played Dr. Neo Cortex for Crash Bandicoot. And that character was so much fun to go in and record because not only do we read the lines as they're written, but the director says, just improvise, improvise as much as you want. And we get to just have a blast and have so much laughs. It's so great. Um, mine is a very obscure anime, and I don't know if any of you have heard of it. It's out of print. It's called Risky Safety. And I played Risky, and Michelle Ruff played Safety, but I had so much fun with that character. And her tagline was, Yoroshiku, baby! <laughs> um, mine had to be a toss-up between Miss Cat and Chin Chan because of all the improv work with that show, but um, also China in Italia because it was just so wrong. <laughs> um, I was in a show called Cosplay Complex, which is kind of like a edgy show. 
uh, lots of fan service. Um, but uh, my director knows that I'll record anything. So, uh, so I, I went in there and that was a lot. We didn't tell a lot of the other actresses what the show was about when they came in. So, uh, and, and one of the things that we like to do is uh, we would record a line that was specifically like a message for the other voice actor. And so, um, you know, it's like they, they would see what the line is supposed to be and then they would respond. But uh, right before we would hit record, it would be me or like, talk smacking, you know, talking smack to, to the voice actors. And she'd be like, what is going on? <laughs> so uh, so we, we had a lot of bloopers like that going on in the studio. So, um, so yeah, that was probably the most fun because just listening to the reactions of the other voice actresses when they figure out what kind of show we were recording. <laughs> um, it's like, wait, I'm a lesbian pedophile. What? <laughs> it's like, that was Jimmy Larson. That was like literally her reaction. She was like, what? Um, uh, the other fun one was, uh, it wasn't an anime, it was for a video game, DC Universe Online. Um, I played the Mighty Isis. Uh, if any of you guys read the original 52 comic, um, she's the wife of Black Adam. Um, well, she, in the video game, when she gets introduced, she fights, uh, she fights Wonder Woman, who was played by Gina Torres. And so, uh, getting to say, like, oh, I got to be Gina Torres is cool. But that's pretty cool, so yeah. I think for, I mean, it's hard to pick one, but uh, if I had to pick one that's definitely out there, it'd be One Piece, because pirates and friendship for hundreds and hundreds of episodes, and it's just so dumb and funny and awesome. Um, I'm about that. I've also decided that at the end of One Piece, it's the, the, the treasures can be the friendships they made along the way. I hope none of you guys are actually expecting like a big old treasure chest with like a crown in it or something, because I got, I got some bad news for you. <laughs> it's just going to be the movie's going to eat it, roll credits, and the show. That was definitely worth 16 out of 100 episodes, guys. Well, thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, my question is for Chris with Ghost Stories. How did you like not break character or because it's just hilarious? How did you? Uh, I'm a professional. <laughs> <laughs> no, I. Uh, we we broke character. We God. Uh, some of that show was really hard to record. If I ever had to come in after Christine Otten making her little baby brother voices, I would I would be a mess for a little bit. Yeah, it was. It was fun. That whole process was a lot of fun. It, and it wasn't hard to get through, but you did always leave laughing and happy. Why am I laughing and happy. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, first of all, hi, you guys. I just did one of your panels. Hi. And I got two things from Heather. One, protein. Protein! <laughs> <laughs> the second thing is this is regarding on Gakarova 2. With Nekamaru. Um, I'm part of a, a Discord of some gamers, and they were wondering do you think Nekamaru's eyebrows could power, power enough electricity for their own country? I think his eyebrows could power everything. <laughs> <laughs> like, we have, we'll, we'll have peace in our time if we can just let his eyebrows do the work. They have clean, sustainable energy. <laughs> Forever. But also just him yelling the word shit in the distance. So that's, that's, a, that's the price you pay for Nekamaru's eyebrows. Thank you. Hi everyone, thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. Now, you guys have had quite the variety of roles in your careers, but have there ever been any that made you stop and think, wait, you want me for this? Me? Like, the ones that came out of nowhere, the ones that surprised you. <laughs> I think Rock Lady, when I didn't, um, it was very top secret, the auditions for Sailor Moon, and the, the five guardians were cast before Chibiusa, and they said Chibiusa has, um, you know, a part in the series where she turns into Black Lady, and I never get called to do evil characters or dark characters, I'm always the cute characters and they're always pink. But it was um, it was interesting because my 
first audition that I sent back, they go, oh, that's way too dark. That's way too evil. And I'm like, yes! <laughs> so that would be my... I know for me, you know, I do a lot of Western animation too, like Justice League and Batman and um, Legion of Superheroes and that kind of stuff. And when I'm in the room, usually we do a, it's what's considered a cast read, which is different than when we record anime where we're by ourselves in a booth and we're going Q to Q. In these kind of things, we go through the entire script from start to finish with the whole cast. And I'm often pinching myself when I'm sitting next to, you know, Frank Welker, and Rob Paulson, and Jim Cummings, and Jeff Bennett, and some of these guys that are just legends in my mind. And I sit there and I'm like, I honor you, you know. And I'm, I'm there really, literally pinching myself, like, how do I get in here, you know? And so that happens a lot, you know. When you're surrounded by such talent, you're like, I, have to, I should not gain somehow, you know? Um, I, I have two that are just like really strange. Um, I'm, I'm always, I'm always a fanny, I'm always like a really cute, yeah, young kid character, lots of pink and side, side relief and lots of comical stuff. Um, so I, I got cast for DC Universe Online as uh, Lust, who is officially the most scantily clad DC Comics character ever created. <laughs> Um, she has like nipple tassel things and, 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 a, and, a, and a triangle in the front. That's it. And I'm just like, wow, that's me? Uh, this game is rated E for everyone? Um, they use the triangle. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was like, um, so, so they, okay, so when I went in to record, they actually had one of the Warner Brothers execs in, in the, uh, uh, pitching in via Skype. And uh, they were all kind of, there were like three execs sitting there in front of the window staring at me. Um, and they were like, you know, that sounds too sexy. Um, you have to tone it down. I'm like, but the character's lost. <laughs> Are you sure you picked the right person? <laughs> um, but yeah, they, they had to make sure that it didn't sound too sexy, even though all the lines were all just like, sex, 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 sex. <laughs> Um, because they had to keep within the ratings board and they were like sitting there like writing notes and I'm like, oh my god, I'm going to screw this all up. Um, trying not to sound like Jessica Rabbit without... That was hard. Um, the, the other one that was just really weird was uh, for a live action movie called Jonah Hex. Um, yeah. Another DC... Uh, wow, you watched it? I loved that. <laughs> it was the only one. <laughs> I can't specifically name yet, but 
it's gratifying because I'm usually called on to be like the low voice, the monster voice. Like that's, you know, they, they, they play to your, your shtick or they play to your strengths. I'm doing a thing right now that's a very high voice. Um, I wouldn't have cast myself for it, but I'm glad somebody else is more imaginative than I am. Um, but it's cool, it's a nice reminder, like, oh, you can do more than you think you can. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, uh, I wish I could say specifically, but I can't. Yeah. Well, yeah, that one. That one I can't name. Good story, size. Good story. Is that your way of the pitch voice? I mean, it's sort of up here, it's this kind of thing, it's just like, oh, I don't know, guys. I'm usually like, hey, guys, what's up? So, yeah, I get out of my usual comfort zone. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you, you are so far, it's been great. You guys are really awesome, by the way. Give yourselves a hand. Hi. Hello. So this is a hypothetical scenario. If you had to recreate a movie or show, but you had to do all of the voices for every character, what movie or show would you do? Well, we do that at 11 o'clock tonight. <laughs> WTF dub. <laughs> Let's see, yeah, I'm gonna show what you're doing. It's a real challenge, you don't have to. I was already in Ghost Story, so I... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, that's a, that's a tough, that's a thinker. Yeah. You stumped the panel. Yay! <laughs> it would make it easier if it was like a movie, like a CGI, every character is just you, what would you do? Like, Toy Story. What? Toy Story. <laughs> <laughs> You've stuffed the panel. Okay, we'll go for them easier. What's favorite breakfast cereal? Favorite what? Breakfast cereal. Favorite Bre breakfast cereal? It's an easy one, right? You can give me the cereal, right? You can probably get it. Right? <laughs> I mean, I hate to eat it, and I feel like the garbage person afterwards with Captain Crunch. <laughs> with Crunch Oh, God. With Crunch Yes. Okay, when I was a kid, it was um, Count Chocula. Oh, and Blueberry. Blueberry. <laughs> Blueberry was mine, yeah. and Cookie Crisp. Oh, yes. I, I we have one called Shane Vitamin. Captain Crunch. Was but whenever good. I eat Captain Crunch, Crunch, I always end up quoting from Friday. <laughs> 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 well, what a good point. Yeah. 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 It's like that frosted mini. My mom tried to raise me, like, oh, you're gonna have, like, you're gonna have Kashi, you're gonna have, like, the, 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 the raisin brand. I was like, I'm a kid, I want sugar! <laughs> <laughs> um, so for me, even getting like those frosted mini weeds, which I realize are sort of pedestrian in the grand scheme of things, but for me, I was like, yes, <laughs> yes, frosted mini weeds, yes, <laughs> and that's why I'm fine. Thank you. <laughs> Hi. Um, what would you do if you could have to watch any favorite character from it? Ooh, favorite to watch. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite anime of all time is Bebop. It's Cowboy Bebop. Yeah. My favorite character in it is. Uh, it's Faye. Yeah. <laughs> I love a good strong woman, yes. <laughs> I can answer later. You can, you can answer. Yeah, uh, mine is pretty easy. So, my favorite anime of all time is Princess Tutu. <laughs> Is it really? Yes. And I am not. Yeah, because I was a little ballet dancer for many years. Wow. Um, I'm old school, uh, so I like Rose of Versailles. Um, oh, people know. Uh, yeah, like I, I was a fan too, so I literally spent all my money on all the the new Rose of Versailles like makeup stuff. Yeah. I'm never gonna use it, but still, I don't know. But yeah, Rosa I had such a huge crush on Andre. Aww. Yeah. I'm still trying to find my Andre. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, have to, I'll just have to live with Mr. Darcy. This is kind of old school too, but I always loved Speed Racer. Yeah. And so I love to be Speed Racer too. I, when they redid it a few, I don't know, 15 years ago, I got to play Racer X, his brother, which is fun. But as a kid, just Speed Racer was the coolest ever, and that's what I would do. Um, my first anime I ever saw was Kimba, the White Lion. Yeah, so I love that. And I, um, I 
also love, I love watching the episodes of Sailor Moon and I love all the characters and I can't even decide between the Guardians, I mean Sailor Venus and just Neptune, Uranus, there's so many amazing characters in Sailor Moon and I, 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 I'm happily watching that, you know, the episodes we recorded. But um, also, uh, old school Totoro. I love Totoro. Yes! Can I pour? Can I pour? Can I pour? Yeah. I'm a huge fan of, of all things uh, Rankin Bass, which was like, um, in Japan, the animation studio was AIC Studio. Was that Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer? Yeah. <gasps> yeah no, those are all done in Japan. I did oh. not know that. Yeah, yeah. Rudolph, all the Frosty the Snowman, Thundercats. I had a panic attack when Rudolph went away on the iceberg with the dentist, and I thought he was never coming back, and I was four years old, and I had a panic attack in the living room, and my mother was like, ready to take me to the hospital. Like, he's not coming back. He's not coming back. The snowman. It's amazing when you're like a four-year-old, and this debatable snowman is so scary, and then you're like, oh my god, he's a piece of felt. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm a huge fan of, of all the animals. Ah! You can see the live action, Mr. Bumble. <laughs> <laughs> Remind us to work on the Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer here, slowly floated out to sea. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> a cute, a cute, a drowning. <laughs> Most of the things I like are things I spend a lot of time from working on, like like Monster or Eli and April or Anohana. But as far as like stuff I didn't work on that I really enjoyed, I've got this stupid backlog of stuff. But one thing that I watched that I really enjoyed, and actually I realized part of the reason I dug it so much was that it had a lot of sort of similar themes to Monster, was um, Psychopaths. And I never saw the second season, so I don't know how it resolves. But as far as just the first season into itself, really, really, really enjoyed that show. Yeah. So it's like, go get it. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hello. I have a question for Patrick. Yes. Um, so I'm a really big fan of fairy tale. How, um, how is it to uh, voice two long running shows? And how do you personally feel about Roxas's uh, character arc and how he's changed? And did it? Uh, affect how you approach voicing the character since he's been, uh, he went through such a dramatic arc. I, I didn't know he, I, I, I just figured he was the douchebag that was going to be there for the fighting festival arc and then they kicked him out of the guild and that's it. Um, so it was really gratifying that he came back. I mean, not just for me, like I get to work more since, but I, I personally in, in media that I enjoy as a consumer, I'm a sucker for redemption stories. So the fact that Lox is, went from like utter douchebag to mostly douchebag, but I've also got my family and I've got my friends and I've got the guild, uh, was, was personally satisfying. And he was a character I, I didn't want to know ahead of time what was going to happen, so it really was just going into the booth and finding out like, okay, this is what we're doing today, this is what we're doing today, because it's fun finding out in the moment. And if, if you've got a good director who keeps you honest anyway, you don't need to know. And I didn't want to, I didn't want to spoil the surprise of myself, I didn't want to play the conclusion. Um, He's fun. I like I like Lassus a lot. Because again, I just thought, oh, he's a bad guy. That's cool. And then we have that whole other side where we're like, oh, that's even that's even better. That's multifaceted right there. I'll take it. So yeah, give me some Lassus. Thank you. Mm, thank you. Okay, so my question is, like, what's the funniest slash weirdest line you've ever had to say? Oh. And for fun, just say it out of context. <laughs> I don't think I can in the morning panel. <laughs> yeah, I definitely can. <laughs> 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 okay, I'll tell a quick story. So I was on a game show. I auditioned for a game show called No Whammies. Uh, Whammy Pressure Luck. And somehow I made it to the Tournament of Champions. <laughs> you impress your luck? Oh, yeah, I made it to the Tournament of Champions. What? 
So there's like YouTube videos, you can Google it. I'm like, some like game show fans really like it, I don't know. But it's, and I didn't even know what I was doing. But what's funny is my agent gets a call from uh, Disney and they said, um, we want to use uh, Sandy's voice in the new movie, Bolt. But she doesn't have to come in to record, we just need permission to use her saying, no whammies, no whammies, no whammies. <laughs> and if you watch the movie Bolt, there's a hamster hanging out in his mobile home and he's watching, flipping through channels. And obviously, somebody at Disney thought it sounded like hamster TV, hamster daytime TV. And so I am, no whammies, no whammies, no whammies, and the hamster smiles. So that is probably the funniest thing I ever to do. I don't think any of us can follow that up. <laughs> hey, Susie, how you doing? Hey, you doing good. <laughs> and this is for um, Claire and Hart. Um, how, as, how do you um, deal with creepy Russia as China? <laughs> Yeah, so for those of you who haven't watched Italia, um, Creepy Russia dresses in a panda suit to stop China, you know, as you do. <laughs> oh, that all true. Uh, yeah, so it's really funny. Um, I'm friends with Jerry, which makes it super awkward because that's a voice actor for Russia. So um, it just made it uh, levels of awkwardness. But I don't really know how China dealt with it. I don't think that he dealt with it appropriately or properly. I think he probably needs to talk to somebody. <laughs> but uh, I don't really have much of an answer for that because that's still an ongoing thing. <laughs> and this is for Patrick Seeds. First of all, um, how, as Germany, how do you deal with Italy, Veneziano, um, Prussia, and um, Austria, and Hungary? I drink. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Copious amounts of pills hurt. I just drink the pain away. Oh yes. I drink until I pass out. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> and, and also, um, as as Ira, how do you um, deal with Mako and Ryuko? Gingerly, because they're like one fifth my size. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. I'd like to raise my cap to all of you for the uh, fine and fantastic careers that you've done and all the voices you've done over the years. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. And also, the second question I have is, in today's uh, political environment, do you feel that there is less censorship of the work you do or more censorship of the work you do? A lot of people say... <laughs> No, um, I think probably, you know, as, as time goes on, there's less censorship, you know. I know that for Sailor Moon, some of the characters and their relationships, they censored quite a bit back when they, in the 90s when they were airing, and now relationships um, between women and men are, you know, nothing because they're very normal in society now, so less censorship in that respect for sure. And I would also say because of technology and we have access to more information and more content and the evolution of digital media, that is, there's less censorship. It's tremendous. <laughs> yes, I agree with that because uh, I have seen a definite change in TV ratings. So what was acceptable for TV 14 about 15 years ago is now TVMA content now. So it's really interesting how just all the ratings are changing and certain things have become a lot more permissible. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, um, I just wanted to first say that this is actually my first anime con, so... Uh, oh, okay. uh, so I was able to ask a question of uh, some of my favorite voice actors. Um, I actually had to look up a couple of you guys, just so you know. Although... We do too! You're Frankie and Loxus, so it's kind of hard not to notice your face. <laughs> um, but my question...
question is, um, how do you guys prepare yourself to do some of the voice acting that you do? We look ourselves up on the internet <laughs> and then progress. No. Oh, that's right. It, oh, it's not making the noise anymore. How do we prepare? Oh, God, how do we prepare? Is that the, really the question? Oh, man. Uh, sometimes what's interesting and what some people don't know is you don't get to prepare. Yes. Um, like you, it will happen that you can go in on a day of, like, that you're booked and find out when you get there like uh, who you're playing and who and what that thing or person is. And uh, so, uh, I, I don't know, um, preparing it doesn't really come into the equation, except we're warming up vocally. Yeah, when we, when we get there, usually they'll show us who we're playing, and then based on what their physical attributes are, we start developing the character, and then 99% of the time we depend on the director to give us more information to help us, you know, it's like any acting role, the more information you have, the better you can portray. When I know ahead of time, I try to do as much research as I can on the character. Thank God for Wikipedia. I mean, oh, listen. Yeah. And then if we've done it before, then we come back like six months later, they usually have a sample of what we've done before, so if, even if we've done a bunch in between, we can get back to that character. It, it's, not a, it's not an interesting answer, it's not one that I even sort of do a good job of in my own life, but I feel like the best prep is just general prep. Like, Am I hydrating enough? Am I sleeping right, right. enough? Am I eating right? Am I stressed out? It's, you know, all that, all that life maintenance stuff you should be doing anyway, regardless of your job, that so few of us, or maybe it's just me, uh, are good at doing. I feel like that's just the general... I mean, a lot of it, if, if you've got something where, oh, it's going to be a throw or put it at the end of the day, or at the end of the week, or schedule it for a two-hour session instead of a four, I mean, there's that sort of scheduling strategy to it, but as far as just prepping for whatever the day calls for, just making sure that you know you're conscious and well fed and well watered and well rested and ready to go be you know a, a show dog as it were. yeah and i would add to that kind of on to what they both said is that you know you completely do walk into the studio as the actor and surrender yourself to the script and to the director because they know the entire content of what's happening and um, so let them guide you and just be flexible and an instrument, you know, to let the character flow through. Anime is, is so much more technical, it's so underrated as an actor. Um, we've been doing it so long, but it's, it's much more technical. You have to act in a certain time frame and you're dubbing that character and there's a lot of technicality to the art of, of dubbing anime as well. Um, for, for me, it's like, because uh, a, lot, a lot of the characters that I've, I've normally had to play have been like really high-pitched characters, and as I got older, I know, right? Shocker! But as I got older, it's like my voice has actually gotten a lot lower, um, and so, uh, you know, it's like simple things like avoiding rooms that have a lot of smoke in it, um, and uh, you know, avoid, I literally avoid people that smoke, like the plague, um, uh, the, the few days before leading up to, to recording. You know, I won't drink anything that could dehydrate me, uh, no alcohol or anything like that. Things like, but, um, but for the most part, I, I get really quiet, like the day leading up to voice acting. Like, I won't say anything. Like, uh, I'll spend an entire day just texting and I won't talk. So, um, so yeah, that's always really weird because people, they, they look at me and they're like, oh, she's smiling crazy. And then it's like, they actually see me at work and I'm just like, you know, it's like a really quiet moment. Like, what the heck is wrong with this picture? Um, but yeah, it's like, I am silent. I am silent the day before. Um, also, I was wondering, uh, do you like, uh, do you all of you guys like being villains or heroes uh, better? Like, which one is your favorite kind of? Uh, heroes for the money and villains for the fun. <laughs> <laughs> that answer for all of us, right? <laughs> I think villains have uh, have a lot of interesting qualities. Like, usually the villains come from some wounded place. So I think there's a lot. They, our villains are sometimes more interesting. But yeah, I love playing them all. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Wow. Okay. Hi. Uh, this is for um, Patrick, and in honor of 
part five of Dojo could be <laughs> potentially. I wanted to ask, how do you think Giorno would turn out if you spent more time with Dio, like his dad Dio? I think spending more time with his dad would probably make him a rat bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the less time spent with Dio, the better. I mean, he's just sort of, I mean, he's wonderful, he's glorious, but he's just kind of a dick. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Nice cosplay, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> this is a question for Chris. When you recorded Ghost Stories, did you have a script, or did you just walk in and shoot it from the hip? Um, so there was actually a script that Stephen Foster would write on the fly while we were recording, and he was watching the screen. And then the sort of unspoken rule was if we came up with an alternate that he thought was funnier than his, that went in, and that's why we're all credited as writers on the show. So it wasn't, it's sort of like there's this myth that we improvise the whole thing, that's not what happened, but we would rewrite stuff on the fly that would go in. Alright, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hi, this is another question for Chris. I was wondering if you could do a Kichinaja line for us, please. A uh, what? What? Like from from, from, from Soul Eater? Oh. Uh, do you have one that you can spit at me that I can spit back to you? No. Then I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Oh, see, I did it like that. Okay, I worked it in. Oh my god. Anything else? Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Has anyone seen a show called Elfin Lead? Yes. Oh. I voiced the puppy killer. Oh. That's all I need to say. I did a show called Blue Dragon. I don't know if anybody ever saw it. And I played Blue Dragon, and he he would roar at the top of his lungs. That lasted about 10 seconds. He did this 12 to 15 times an episode, and we would, would record probably four to six episodes at a shot. And I would have to yell like a. Like that, over and over and over and over and over. And finally, after like 60 episodes, I said, I can't do this anymore, thank you. And I retired from the park because it was too taxing. I couldn't talk or do anything for two days after. So I was losing work and I wanted them to record it. Like, can you please record it? It's the same animation every single time, you know? And they, they did, and, but like, oh, we used that thing we recorded, and they said, oh, we didn't label it right, so we're going to have to search on another drive. It would take like 10 minutes, and finally the producer said, we don't have time to search for these, just have to do it again. And I was throat ripping so hard on that role that I finally just said, no, thank you. I've got one I won't name by name, but it was, a, it was a project where, due to specifics from the client, it could be translated, but not adapted. And so nothing was long enough. Every line was super duper underwritten, and the only way we could pad it out to make it fit the flap, because we couldn't add anything, was to talk like this. Yes. <laughs> when we got to the end of that session, it was supposed to be a three hour session, it ended up being like five or six hours. It was, you know, eight or nine at night, and when I left that building, Aunt Sharon and I both left, and I looked at this guy like, I'm leaving right now and not coming back because I finished. You might be leaving right now and not coming back because you're just done. Like, <laughs> this, this might have been it. You might be clocking out forever. I wouldn't blame you in the least. But you said like, you might be clocking out. <laughs> Thanks. One more. Hey, perfect timing. Last question. I feel like this is going to be a good question. Um, have you guys read any good books lately? Have you read any good books lately? <laughs> Anyone? Sea of Rust. Oh, Robert Cardell. Yeah. Yes. I can put one second. Damn good author. Well, Robert you know. Cardell wrote the movie Doctor Strange. Yeah. So, and he wrote a book called Sea of Rust that just came out not too long ago. It's super damn good. Super I'm reading three books right now, but my favorite one out of the three is this a book called Me and the Devil by an author called Nick Toshes, and he's very dark and strange. Which is my aesthetic. Uh, I'm a classic fan, so I, I'm, I'm constantly reading. 
recently reading like Jane Eyre and Wuthering Heights. And, uh, I'm reading Pride and Prejudice again. <laughs> so uh, I read uh, Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn before the series came out, and both were absolutely incredible, very powerful, very terrifying. Um, but right now I'm going through, I do a periodic rereading of the Nero Wolf books by Rhett Stout, because I'm a huge fan of those. And it's a lot of books. And I see everybody's looking at me blankly, but I love old school mystery. <laughs> um, I'm reading The Alchemist by oh. Paul Hallow. I'm a yoga teacher and I'm reading The Seven Spiritual Laws of Yoga by Deepak Chopra. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you guys have read, I highly recommend the Mistborn series by Brandon Sanderson. <laughs> Say it louder, we couldn't hear you. Uh, I recommend the Mistborn series by Brandon Sanderson. Okay. Y'all have read it. Um, and I, I guess I'm done. Thank you. Thank you. You guys, oh yeah, any panels or anything you want to announce? Oh, so we have a signing coming up. Yeah, we have a signing, signing in one hour in at one hour. o'clock in signing room two. Yeah. You can come get your stuff signed. And then the What the F panel tonight, dub at 11 p.m. in uh, panel room two, I think, maybe. Yeah, and maybe I hope you guys... Check it out, it's really fun, fun. Oh, 18 plus, though. Hope you guys will all come out to the charity auction. Every hour we're getting new donations, so come by, check it out in the charity room. Check out the, the charity uh, room. Lobby level. Too. It's really amazing. Great cause this year. Uh, anybody else? Anything? Any hellos, goodbyes? Any other panels or anything? I got something at 3.30. Okay, right. check, your, check your programs. And tomorrow we have one called Let's Get Loopy, where we're doing voice acting, and, yeah. and you guys, the attendees, are going to be doing the voice acting. We'll, we'll tell you how to do it, and then we'll do it, and then we'll watch it back when it's all done, and you'll see yourselves in uh, a Disney movie, and also in a, a blockbuster uh, film, uh, one of the Planet of the Apes movies. I brought some stuff that we're going to be doing, so it's That's really three awesome. Three yeah. o'clock. So thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.